So mashallah, this is a town hall. We just have a very few people here, but I understand that because of the rain and wind and, and everything else. But also because we generally have fewer people and they see it, they're recorded to see it. There's, there's a saying in people that are on boards at different places, if people don't show up, everything is okay. When people show up, then you've got a problem, right? When a lot of people show up. So Bismillah, this is a construction update. I'm just going to get this started and then I'm going to turn it over to Sayyid Bhai. Sayyid is the uh, chairman of the Board of Trustees uh, here at, at MCC. He's also been uh, and a founder, one of the founders. But he's also been a founder of SRVIC and also a founder of ICPD. So behind the scenes, he Alhamdulillah, has been doing a lot of work uh, for, uh, uh, for decades. Uh, mashallah. Uh, so with that, We'll go through this pretty quickly and then we'll try to take questions at, at the end, inshallah. We're going to start with just for people that haven't been here that long, but also to connect why we're doing what we're doing. We're going to start with what is it we were trying to do when we built, uh, put MCC, MCC together? What was the vision? Has it changed? Has it not changed? And then what are some of the priorities uh, that we're trying to, trying to um, achieve or focus on? And then the second thing is sort of a realization, because it says MCC 3.0. If you think of MCC 1.0 as when we decided to do it and we were renting, right? And we had a Sunday school, but that was it. But then we were renting, we were renting a property, right? That's, you can think of that as MC 1.0 and then 2.0, so that started in 2007. Uh, 2.0 you can think of in 2010 when we got this, on this, prop, on this property. So it's been 14, mashallah, 14 years, right? And we've been doing things, if I look back, 14 years seems like such a long time. We've been doing things slowly, right? The, if in terms of building the infrastructure and doing everything over here, we started with the two bathrooms, then we started with this room, then we, I think we put the, in between we put the carpet in over there, the carpet over there. Just slow, small things here and there, here and there. Just as the money came in, we start doing a little bit here, a little bit here. The problem with that is, I know that's all good, but now if you think about how large the community is and how much, pr pressure is the wrong word, how much demand there is for doing more, right? That says, well, we gotta like turn up what we're doing in a very signif significant way. And if you think about Everything we heard in the past, every, all of us have heard in the past two years, three years, about what is being taught in schools, and just our ability, and education is a big part of what we do, and our ability to really not fulfill that right now, well, that says that's a problem, and we have to go figure out how to, how to adjust to that, right? And some of that came to, came to the forefront when we tried to buy the land, and we, got a, and we walked away for it for good reason, but one reason we walked away from it is, well, we wanted to build a school. And if you can't build a school, why are you getting the land, right? So I think that was a reality check on, we got to speed things up. We cannot do this, take another 14 years to slowly get to where we want to get to, right? And that's why I call it uh, 3.0. So this is a major infrastructure change at a lot of things that we do at MCC. Most of when we talk construction, when you talk construction, we're talking about spaces, but what we really mean by spaces is the service, the education, the programs that you provide there. Right? So that's really what's behind it. And then we'll talk about, well, why is it taking so long? Why does it take so long? How long is it going to take? What are you exactly trying to get done? How much is it going to be? We'll try to address all those questions also. So Bismillah. Um, so I already talked about MC, MCC 3.0. So that has to do with just accelerating what we're doing. We need to get things done in a two-year, three-year time frame, not in a 14-year time frame, right? Some things will take longer, but um, well, a lot of what we're talking about here needs to be done quicker. Uh, this is a vision, and I think of vision as a dot on the wall. That's what everybody is sort of aiming for, right? Uh, here, the, the, the baseball. Uh, we always thought of ourselves as a regional community center, not just for one city, right? A regional one and a bigger one. Uh, meeting all the needs of the community, and then also aiming to be like a model for what other masjids, masajid, the community center should follow. It's not a claim we make that we are we're that. 
We aim to be that. We want to be that. And you can read underneath that uh, what that means. Okay, I won't go through the, through the, through that in detail. If you look at strategic priorities, if you look at the list, there's nothing new here. The language may have changed, and the the what we the circles, what what how we're labeling things may have changed. But there are a couple of things here that are different, right? One says Saturday school. So weekend school, not just on Sundays, but on Saturdays. We have to figure out how to do that. It's not easy to do because it requires a lot more volunteers, right? But on the other hand, we've grown at least three or four times larger than we were five years ago or six years ago. So there has to be a way to engage a larger set of volunteers than, than we're engaging today. Uh, K through five. K through five is not new. If you look at our original bylaws, we always said we all, we're going to have a K through five. Now the, the emphasis on it has to be higher because of what's going on in, in the outside world. And we'd like to also figure out how do we get, make it more than that? How do we get a middle school? How do we get a high school? Right. But we have to start with K through five. And then we say, well, how do we do this completely properly? The rest of it, I, I won't read through. You've seen the, it's a list of things. The cafe is probably different than what we had thought about before. Uh, we're thinking of that as a space for younger uh, Muslims, convert Muslims, where it can just be a hangout space. You know, a space you just have tea, coffee, drinks, bobo, whatever that, I don't know what that drink is, people talk about it. Yeah, I, I actually don't, want it, don't know what it is, but whatever it is, uh, it's sort of a hangout place where you just hang, right? And I've been to different massages and I've seen this in uh, Imam, uh, uh, Imam uh, Majid's uh, masjid in, in, in Virginia, right? They have a little kahwa. It's called actually kahwa. It's a cafe. It's a small area, and every Thursday it is full, and there's nobody above 30 in there, and it is full every Thursday because they have programs targeted towards younger people, and what they do over there, they have a 40-minute talk. Then the person who's giving the talk goes away. Then somebody else comes in, and all his job is, her or her job, is to facilitate what, and the people, and people around a table, what did you hear? What do you like about what you heard? So there's actually a real discussion going on, not just a you know, talking head up top. Right? I saw, and I thought it was very, very wonderful. Was, I, I was surprised how everybody was engaged. This is what I heard. What do you think? What did you think? But, you know, it's the type of stuff you see at school all the time. So these are the priorities. Uh, it is very much education-centric, social events to bring us together as a family, services, cradle to grave, and then reaching out to beyond the Muslim community. Right? That, that, that is the range of things we, we need to do. And now we'll go to construction plans. So that gives you an idea of, if we're trying to do that, how do we do this with these, these, the spaces we have and the spaces we can create? That's what the discussion is really about. I'm going to go through this list, and I'm going to turn it over to you. So uh, Saeed Mai has done a lot of work on this in terms of how do we take this to the uh, Hacienda uh, Office Association? How do we take it to the city? How do we go through approval process? What groups of things have to be done together? Because if you fix this, you've got to fix this and fix this together. But if you touch this, be careful not to touch you know, those sorts of things. So he's put this together in three packages. And I'm just going to turn it over to you and let you talk about the packages. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Um, uh, thank you all for coming um, and braving this weather. Uh, we understand uh, it, it's really uh, it's really uh, bleak outside, to say the least. Uh, it's windy. It's rainy. But uh, this is something that the community has been asking for some time now, uh, a construction update. And uh, here we are. So uh, as Brother Pervez started to say, uh, uh, mentioned the three packages, uh, we've broken up the entire uh, remodeling into three packages. Uh, primarily, the reason is, First of all, 
to see which functions fit together and so that we can take that package through the approval process in a way that it is not held up because of one reason or the other. Uh, we operate the community center here uh, under a conditional use permit. Uh, and you would see the abbreviation for that, the uh, CUP. Um, under the CUP, we are allowed to do certain things uh, with a certain capacity of people. Uh, if we exceed those limits and if we exceed the functionality, then we are required to go back to the city and ask for a modification, either a modification of the CUP or a new CUP. Uh, that is something that uh, we want to avoid because for one, it takes a lot of effort and time. Uh, some, if we are required to do a new CUP, it may go back to the city and we may have a public hearing and all the neighbors get involved and uh, so it's a long process. So being able to avoid those uh, that route, we broke the entire uh, remodeling process into three processes. Even if one package is held up because of one reason or the other, uh, all other packages uh, can proceed, uh, you know, smoothly. So that was uh, the rationale for breaking this up into three packages. Uh, package one, as you see, uh, is mostly the outside area. Uh, there's a picnic area the with a trellis, a barbecue, a full-size basketball court, uh, a park course with exercise equipment, uh, outside voodoo stations. Uh, a lot of people would appreciate that, the community would appreciate that because if you're running late, uh, so that would certainly help uh, the congestion. Uh, a children's play structure, open play field, and EV charging stations. So here's, uh, a, a, I should say, a bird's eye view of the first package. Uh, as you can see, the basketball court on, on the far upper side. Uh, the green patch is the open play area. Uh, behind that, on the left, is the children's play structure. And below that is uh, the picnic area uh, with a trellis on it. It may seem like it's a, it takes a lot of time to, to get to where, uh, you know, to actually do the project. Uh, before we actually go to the city for approval, uh, we have to agree internally amongst ourselves and different uh, groups and different, uh, uh, you know, the different people who are interested in all this. Uh, so even before going and applying to the city for uh, a change or, or an approval, uh, there is a process that we go through internally and we also want to make sure that the design that we come up with is, is follow, it follows a certain pattern, it follows a certain theme uh, which we, of course, being an Islamic center, we keep it close to that. So with that, let me go to the next slide, which is uh, package two. Uh, the package two is, is, gets more interesting in the sense uh, we are planning to build a second story, add a second story to, to the existing MCC. Uh, it will not cover the entire MCC structure, the single study structure that you see now. It would cover as much as we could, which would be, uh, you know, a partial covering. And then uh, pictorially, what it looks like, uh, I'll have another slide that you can take a look at. Uh, in addition to... A Basically, it starts here. It starts, it does start here, uh, 
uh, above the conference room and then it builds out that way. Uh, and then it builds out as far as we can uh, in terms of, uh, you know, we end before we get into uh, the uh, tenant's space. So we can't build on top of the tenant's space. So everything above, uh, that is the hallway, the bathrooms, over uh, the conference room, and, and then out uh, towards the parking lot. Roughly, it covers about 14,000 square feet, uh, if that helps. Uh, to get that in, to give that a context, MCC area that you see currently uh, is around 30,000 square feet that we use. So we're adding roughly 50%, about 14,000 square feet for the second story. Then the second story, which is uh, which primarily would be used for the Saturday and the Sunday school. We have uh, new admin offices below that, which would be on the first floor, uh, which would also have additional conference rooms, youth lounges, gyms, uh, men for men and women, a parent child with children's playroom, a library and a seniors lounge. Uh, we've all talked about this in the past, and uh, you may, if you have attended any of the previous uh, uh, updates, we've all talked about this. Uh, this is where we have actually put it down in black and white. And right now, it is in the process of uh, getting approvals. The, the lounges are on the first floor. Yes. Okay. Bismillah. So the package one has been submitted? Yes. And package two also submitted? Yes. And package three? We, we'll, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll get to it. One, one thing I would add here is where it says additional conference rooms. This is really the only teaching class area we have, but it's the formal teaching class. So the idea is to have, not, not as big, but two additional ones about half this size, where everything is all set up and you have classes there while these are going on also. So the, our ability to have multiple classes at the same time without going into the mushroom area. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, we're, we're going to add additional conference rooms, not, not this size, but smaller size, maybe half the size and some a quarter of the size, that are all ready to go multimedia, teach, on the web, etc. right? Which today we run into conflicts just in this room itself. So that will broaden our ability to have more and more programs simultaneously. Basically, uh, only uh, Sunday, Saturday, and Sunday. And they're related, uh, you know, like their admin offices, a conference room for the teachers, uh, and uh, there's another slide we can go through. But all the lounges and everything are, are on the first floor, and uh, we'll talk about it. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so here's a drawing of the second floor, and basically, uh, as you can see, uh, this is one of the uh, sheets that we submitted for approval. Uh, roughly, it has about 25 classrooms. Uh, 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 there's offices for admin, uh, the conference room, there is uh, uh, a bathroom, a set of bathrooms, and a uh, uh, and a break room for the teachers. So it seems simple in the sense that, you know, a few lines draw a few boxes here and there, uh, but there is a lot that goes on behind this. And the reason I say that, things like what we have to account for, the classrooms for, say, the special needs children, have to be close to the bathrooms. So how do we design that? Uh, what is the city looking for in terms of uh, the capacity? Are there enough exits? Are there enough staircases? Is, are, so all those things have to be designed uh, into, it looks simple, you know, just a few boxes here and there, but uh, believe me, it's, it's a lot more involved. Uh, there are two sets of stairs uh, and an elevator that we would add. So here is a 
pictorial view of what the second story would look like. Uh, if you look at uh, the slide A, uh, that gives a real good uh, picture. Uh, the, the lower structure is what we have now. Uh, but what we have today, uh, you see uh, the, the, the pink colored roof going uh, around the structure. That's where we are today. The second structure is the layer above that. And that's what the second story uh, will, be, will look like once we complete it. Um, other uh, slides on this show you know, what it looks like from other directions north, west, south, uh, but the basic concept uh, is what you see in slide A. Um, here are the elevations. Again, uh, the only emphasis that I was trying to make was the bottom layer here is what we have today, and the layer that you see above that is what we are building and adding as a second story. And again, this is one of the uh, sheets that we, sub that we have submitted for approvals. Uh, it can be used for K through 5, but the K if, when we talk about K through 5, that kicks in some other requirements, just as, for example, it has to have a play area. If, they, if we have a K through 5 school, for it to be approved as a K through 5 school, we have to have a play area. We, it is not designed for the K through five play area. Package one is not designed for that yet. But once we get into the process approvals, but that will be a separate approval from what we are doing now. K through five is would come later. Once we are past this, once we are we have implemented this, then uh, we would be in a position. Uh, to address the K through five. Yeah, the, the strategy here is try to get this through without a CPU change. There may be a CPU change. We know for sure if we do a K through five, that is going to require a public hearing and pa 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 and holds off everything. So the, the idea is design as much as you can with the idea you may switch from both Sunday, Saturday, and K through five but only those things you can do without triggering everything else, right? So it's a little balance of trying to do in between. Yeah, I'm sorry, the other thing I would just add on the, um, in, in addition to all the things that's on the second story, uh, we will also be, uh, and we may, this is not directly connected to package shoe, but has to do with the inside. We'll be uh, raising the uh, the ceiling in the, the prayer area and the member, and you'll be able to, the imams will be able to come in from the outside directly into the uh, where the member is. And behind there, there's going to be a little imams room, and then behind there also a little room for uh, 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 at the calf for just a few people that are here, like all ten days, not seven days. My, my question is that. Uh have you thought about it that maybe, you know, in the future, we, we may be able to, to have the play area around, around the, the masjid some, somewhere so that, you know, just, just thinking ahead, ahead to, you know, for the future? Let, let's hold off on that question. Yeah. There's a broader question about high school and middle school and so forth. But inshallah, we can talk about that. Uh, package three is also interesting in the sense of you know, we have to have food, of course. So package three consists of uh, a dining hall, a cafe, part of it, part of the cafe is covered, and uh, the, uh, the, an extension to that will be open. And associated with those would be a commercial kitchen, uh, so that uh, we can uh, have, have proper food, uh, for the for the events. So here, as you can see, this is uh, the first floor for packages two and three. Uh, what you see in red on top is package two, first floor, 
And then on the extreme right hand side is uh, just, if I may point out, uh, uh, this is the mem this is the mehrab right now, and next to mehrab is the uh, imam's room uh, that Brother Pervez talked about. Uh, these are the existing bathrooms, the uh, parent-child area, uh, play areas for younger kids, two additional conference rooms, another conference room just uh, the other side of this wall, uh, of course, a smaller size. And then there are admin offices as you enter the building on the left-hand side. Uh, also, over here is the uh, ladies' lounge. And that opens into the, uh, this is the ladies' lounge that opens into the ladies' bathroom. Uh, Men's bathroom is over here on this side, next to the bathrooms here. Um, this is the library, the senior center, and then the main lobby. Uh, and all this is part of the package too. And keep in mind, the second floor that goes on top of this is also part of this package. Uh, package three here is the uh, dining area. Uh, roughly, we are looking at about 350 plus, uh, able to accommodate 350 plus people. It may get to 400, but then again, uh, this was this is the package that we think most likely the city might want to revisit our CUP and that's why we have bundled this as a separate package so that if this takes longer we can still be doing the other stuff so we are not delayed. Um, here is the commercial kitchen that serves the dining area on this side and serves the cafe on this side. So uh, let's talk about where we are today and uh, see where the three packages are. Package one, the CUP modification is not required. So, so we are within our limits. And uh, we have al already gotten the Hacienda Owners Association approval for that. And right now, uh, it's been with the city for about uh, three weeks now. And uh, we are expecting uh, a response very soon, I think. Next week, next uh, Monday, I should be knocking the doors uh, at the city hall uh, to see where we are. Uh, construction for the package one, we have already started, as you may have noticed outside. And uh, part of the reason is uh, we are doing those things which do not require any inspection or approval. So we, have, uh, we are moving forward uh, in being able to do that. Package two, we have verified that it does not require a CUP modification. Hacienda Owners Association has already approved it. And we will be applying to the city uh, within a week or so. Uh, there are some additional things that the city wanted, uh, like the uh, like the renderings that we looked at for the second floor and they want to make sure the color scheme and everything blends with the rest of the office buildings in the uh, in the in this uh, office complex package 3 is also ready and it we are at this time at this moment we are anticipating that the city might want to review uh, our CUP. Uh, the CUP modification is relatively simpler than going for an ex a new CUP altogether. So uh, let's see what they come back with and see what uh, they want and uh, then we can uh, take it from there. Uh, 
uh, we will be applying uh, to the Hacienda Owners Association uh, within uh, within a week or two with that package. Uh, I'd like to mention that uh, the association approval uh, is is most more difficult than that of the city. Uh, the they are very thorough and they check everything to the last detail. So once you have that approval, uh, the, s the rest of the approvals, the city, of city approvals are mostly uh, mechanics, uh, which we think we can handle. So that brings us to numbers. How much does all this cost and how much have we spent? Um, so we actually went back and said, let's not just tell you how much it's we're doing now. Let's go back five years and how much have we been spending? So you'll see a set of numbers and uh, on the left it's on the left it is by area. Uh, that's the big uh, table on the left hand on your left hand side. Uh, on the right top it's roughly by year. And the numbers aren't exactly, they're approximately, they're close, they're not exact. So, um, you know, when you look at it, furniture, the couches, offices, the furniture in the offices, the carpets, etc. About 25000 the lobby itself, which includes the doors, the windows, the woodwork, uh, the, the uh, uh, what's, what's called the, the drywall or the uh, drywall, the gypsum wall, if you, some people call it, or wallboard. Uh, that the metal, sometimes the sheet metal behind it, the woodwork, the staining, the ceiling, and all of that stuff, uh, about 135,000. And that includes the ducting, the electrical, blah, 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 right? Um, and if you look at that ceiling, that's actually a pretty strong ceiling on that side. We can actually use uh, the part that's not part of the second story for storage. There's a lot of space up there. Uh, prayer, the glass partition that's over here, the shoe racks, the flooring, the new offices, fire alarm, painting, staining, the roof, the HVAC, parking lot, etc., etc. So that looks like a lot, and it is a lot. It's nine hundred thousand dollars plus over the last five years, right? And then if you look at it by year, most of it has been done post COVID, right? We did a little, we did a little bit of pre COVID. That's 2019, and is virtually zero in 2020 because nobody was doing anything. The construction workers were not available. They weren't allowed to come out. And 21 also was slow COVID year. And then last year was a very significant uh, set of money spent. A lot of that also, by the way, if you look at just down here on consulting, you know, the people we use to help us plan stuff. One of the things uh, that Saeed Bhai mentioned, that the HOA, the Hacienda Office Association, is very strict. They wanted to know exactly what lights we're going to have where, and they wanted a photometric study to see how much light is going to be going to the neighbors. Right, so you hire a specialist to do that. And that's another extra month, two months. Right, and you don't know that they're going to do that until you're in the process. We were talking about having the uh, basketball. They wanted a six-foot fence around it. We wanted something higher. That was an argument uh, he had, uh, seen I had with the HOA going back and forth. That was like three weeks, right? And when you say what takes so long, if anybody has done construction, there are all sorts of things that pop up that you are not expecting, and it just takes long. It, it literally does, right? And I, I will say, uh, Saeed Bai is doing this completely 100% volunteer, right? There's no, no, uh, no dollars, there's no, there's no personal benefit at all. Uh, inshallah, it's great personal benefit in terms of blessings, uh, in terms of blessings. Um, and then, so that's how much we've spent so far. We'll talk about how much we think we're gonna spend going forward. And then we also said, well, how much have we raised? And that's the bottom right-hand side, by year. There's money, donations for the building fund or the construction fund. Okay. Um, so there's seven hundred eighty thousand dollars we've raised. I did not include in that, by the way. There's a fifty thousand uh, dollar donation for uh, the library uh, that somebody gave 
very specifically for that. They want their name on it, etc., etc., etc. So that, since we haven't spent it, that money is a part. We've just allocated a separate, right? Because we ha we don't we don't want to touch that money. Somebody gave it for a purpose. It is for that purpose. Um, so one question to ask is what what's going on here? You spent nine hundred thousand plus. You only had seven hundred eighty thousand dollars. Where is the magic? How did you do it, right? Well, this is donation money. Some of the money that we get from the rent also goes here. In the early years, some of it went for operations. Now we're trying, trying not to have it all go for operations so that we don't have to raise, we still, we still have to raise a lot of money, but it'll reduce the amount of money we have to raise if that money can help on the construction side, okay? And that's about $25,000 a month. Right, um, and we don't want to use every penny that's in the construction account because something you know something bad bad you know weather. We got to keep a hundred thousand dollars or some number like that just in the bank. Never use it just in case you know money. Right, so we have to be careful how we how we look at this. So that's how much we spent. Um, now this gets interesting: is how much all these things are going to cost, and these are estimates. Uh, in some cases, they bottoms up. In uh, most of bottoms up approximates. Uh, in some cases, we know most of it, but we don't know this section of it. But we know all the other part around it. Uh, so, uh, package one uh, is going to cost about six hundred thousand dollars, and that's all the outside stuff, with everything outside, right? Which includes, by the way, a sewer line that's going to go underneath certain things. So that's you don't. We don't talk about that, but there's other things going on that make it expensive. Uh, the basketball court by itself is going to be expensive. We have to redo the parking lot, the number of parking spots in the entire area required now. We have to have X number of EV stations. We have no choice of this required, right? So once you touch, start touching things, the city has all these other requirements. And if you've done houses, you know that you have to come up to uh, you have to come up to the recent requir permit requirements than rather versus the grandfathered ones uh, once upon a time ago. Um, so that's the least expensive one. Well, not the least expensive one. That is sort of the ex expensive one. But the really expensive one is package two because you are putting a second story. Everything is up there is going to be new and the foundation below has to be strengthened. Right? And we're putting two staircases, and we're putting in bathrooms up there, and we're putting in an elevator up there. So that becomes very, that, that all adds up. Um, and it's all the things downstairs we're doing also, which is additional conference rooms, there's going to be a gym, a lounge, a, a library on that side, a library on that side. Um, am I missing anything? Other offices, and also the uh, upbringing of the uh, the budget area here itself. Okay, approximately 1.6 million. Okay, now you may say that's a lot, but think about this: you're getting 14,000 square feet for 1.6 million. You cannot buy 14,000 square feet for 1.6 million; just not available. 1.6 million will get you a 3,000 square foot house. That's what 1.6 million will get you. Right. If you just think about a way of thinking about it, right, this will get you uh, four times as much, or five times as much. Yeah, there's a question in the back. I'm sorry if this question was uh, answered earlier, but um, do you mind explaining what happened with the Livermore land purchase? Uh, Attempt. Yeah, just put on hold, and we'll do that as soon okay. as we get through this. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this, how much of the funding is secure, or nothing is secure? Uh, I would say uh, the reason I'm only hesitating is because we had a lot of money that came with the land and a lot of it is being returned, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So how much, is, and I think we're about 80% probably returned. 
But yeah. So there's so there's a little more, yeah. right? We can probably cover package one. We can probably cover package one uh, with the funds that are here. Uh, beyond that, we have to raise. Okay. But I don't, we don't want to wait to the last minute to raise either. Right? And can I ask you, I have two more questions. For package one, are we losing any parking spots or are we adding more? Uh, are we plus or minus one or two, right? So uh, for the entire uh, property, we have about 307 parking lots, uh, parking stalls. So after doing all this uh, and taking into account the newer uh, requirements that you have to have uh, all the EV stations, you have to have uh, the carpool uh, parking stalls mm -hmm. for van pools and all, uh, we will end up with maybe one less parking stall out of the 307. And we are trying to uh, even get that back so that we, are, we have the same parking stalls that we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and with the parking shortages that we have, are we looking at any multi-level parking in future? Uh, we did do an exercise to uh, come up with, uh, you know, how much it's going to cost. And the cost was very prohibitive uh, to do another structure, like a parking structure, is what you're talking about. Underneath or above, either yeah, way. Yeah, it's not like how we see in shopping centers, right? It takes two spaces, but you can park ten cars. Yeah, yeah. It's something similar. Yeah, the, the, the cost is really prohibitive to, to do a separate parking structure. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, any questions on costs? What this says is we're going to have to raise about two point some million. Uh, the, the first one we can cover. We're going to raise about 2.7 million. We're going to start this Ramadan. I'm not expecting to raise 500,000 or a million or anything like that. But just get the process going, get people getting excited about this. Inshallah, maybe raise a couple hundred thousand dollars, maybe 300,000. So it's a number we've done before, right? And then uh, we will do what we used to do before. For those of you that haven't been here a long time, and some of you have been here a long time, we, you know, we're going to go rent a hotel, we're going to make it a big deal, get everybody excited, the food's over there, everybody's going to look at each other and talk, and bring a great speaker, and we'll raise, you know, four or $500,000, right? And we'll have to do that twice a year, uh, to, because we want to get this done in the next two years. We don't want to get this done. We don't want to wait 14 years, right? So there are two ways to do this, right? Get into the habit of raising money and set the expectation that we're going to be doing that, right? And it's for us. It's not for us, me. It's for us, right? And then the other is, um, one, getting people get, getting used to it uh, and just shortening the time. And then if we have to go the Karza Hassan route, we'll go the Karza Hassan route. Because uh, we know when we did the land, somebody asked about the land, we know in a very brief period, right, in a 60-day period, we had raised uh, a little over 3 million, I think. Yeah, close to 3 million. And about half was, a little less than half was cash, and the other half was cars and house. And it, it came like this. And then we started, we stopped doing it, because we had a clear idea this is not going Right, so we stop. We stop doing it. So the capacity to raise the money is here. The interest is here. If it's a good project, if it's not a good project, people don't give, right? But if you ask the question, do you want more services here? Do you want more rooms, classrooms where we can do more programs? Do you want a place where kids can play? Do you want a place where youth can play basketball or a little running area? You want a place there's a library? You want a place where there's a ladies' gym they can just hang? There's a uh, men's gym, they can just hang. There's a lounge. And there's an outside cafe, you can just hang, right? Uh, that's all going to be there, right? And th the thing that makes it so much different is right now we have a very open area. And as everybody knows, it can become crazy because everybody runs every, er, run around. This gives spaces for, for activities defined, 
right? And then it's just a matter of what do we want to do with them, right? Turn it up, right? Yes. Uh, I have a few questions, but at this moment, um, it's, I think we're. Do you have time frames for these? And like you're saying, you just said that I believe that you want to try to complete these in the next couple of years. But you guys have been talking about the basketball court for a couple of years. So I mean, is it really going? To, is it really possible to even like? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you really? You need three things, right? To to get something done. You need something approved, you need the money, and then you need the time to sort of manage the project, right? Up until now, nothing's been approved until this very recently, and that's in pro the construction is actually, for phase one, is in process, right? We are expecting it to be done, the approval process. Uh, we are expecting the approval process to be done, I would say, four to six weeks and then inshallah the goal is to have package one done by this fall inshallah that's the goal unless we hit anything unforeseen that the city might want additional studies they want they might want uh, any uh, additional information or they might want to uh, it, it's unknown at that at this point what the city might come back with in, in terms of questions, but uh, our goal is to have package done by this fall, inshallah. Yeah, and I will say I think there's a difference between vision and execution, right? And we started talking about this two and a half years ago, probably, right? Um, and, but if you realize it was until not last the year before we did the survey of okay, do you really want a full court, half court? That the, yeah, these things have their their cycle of time. Um, I think we we I could have done better in just saying, look, we're at the early stage here. And this we have to go through a detail stage, and then you have to go through an execution stage. Right, we're completing the detail stage. Right, is the way I think about it. We're completing the detail stage. Because, you know, when two packages are, uh, I mean, three packages are ready to go. Now it's just, okay, flow it out. Um, money is going to constrain us, not initially. Money will constrain us here, which is why I want to get that started, that process started now. And then people are going to ask, well, wait a minute, you raised money so, and nothing came through, why should we give? But the, the, the answer is going to be the question you just raised. Right, if you don't give now, this will get stopped. Because now we are on the other side of this, and this is going through the approval process. Yes. Uh, so I have actually one question and one suggestion. Yes. Uh, for the K to five, uh, uh, putting the education in the very first one, but I don't see any timeline uh, for what, when is like is 2030 or, or when is the plan for the for package two? No, no, for the school, the K to five. I think K five. Yeah, think yeah. Elementary school. When is the plan? Okay. That, that is one question. And another suggestion. This is actually not question. Suggestion is that uh, in our community, I don't see actually we have a lot of professional here. I don't see any engagement actually. For example, uh, when somebody lo loses job. Or some some uh, university are looking for a job internship. Actually, in Bay Area and in US, what I see that networking is very important. And when you have a referral, actually they look at your resume. And when you don't have a referral, it didn't even trade resume how good you were. And in Hindu community, Indian community, it is very they are very powerful. When you, they actually lay off in Meta or Google, I saw how they have sales how they have Salesforce, how they help each other. In our community, we don't have anything. And actually, I'm willing to help you. Actually, I, uh, that volunteer for this kind of thing, so we can make a community that when we can help each other. Actually, when somebody loses job, when the university is student looking for link uh, their internship, uh, we can do that. Actually, make because we have a thousand Muslim here and we, they work in different places. We can help each other, and I'm willing to volunteer. I don't say that you do it. I'm willing to do it actually, but I need help actually to do this thing. Okay, so Bismillah. Okay, so there were two questions here. There's K through five, and then the the other this question about uh, resume building and job hunting and so forth. So please do volunteer. 
there, there have been resume classes here. I know there have been several classes over the last year, uh, resume building classes and so forth. No, no, I understand. I'm just saying that's one, that's one tiny aspect. Uh, do volunteer. The first thing I would do if I were you is get other volunteers to work with you. Get a group, and then you can make it, then you can make it work. With respect to K through five, uh, and I also want to answer the land question. Somebody, I think he's not here anymore. Uh, the K through five question. The K through five question is a very interesting question. I think we have to do things in parallel. Okay. By parallel, mean, I mean we have to have, we have to do a second story for kind of, for uh, for Sunday Saturday school. If that can become K through five, that's fantastic. Okay. I think that's going to be hard, and I think it's going to take time. I think at the same time, we have to do exactly what we did with the land. We have to start getting serious about this, and we have to say, okay, is there something available that we can buy? Okay, because it'll solve several problems. It'll be a second location. It'll offset all the park. Everything we're doing, by the way, is going to cause more parking issues. Right? Not quite as bad as Friday, but it'll cause parking issues. So having a second location is actually also important. Right? So while we're doing this, we are going to keep an eye to see if there's anything that makes sense for us that can be a school. It's going to be rare that we could just buy a school as is. I don't think that's going to happen. If it, I'm not if it does, that's fantastic. Having said that, we can look for smaller spaces that we can convert into schools. Uh, yeah, well, let's do this. We're going to take a prayer break, and after that, uh, right after, right after Farth, we'll do some quick sunnah, uh, and then we'll come back, but only for 15 minutes. I don't want it to drag out because everybody will start leaving anyway. We'll, we'll get started. Say I should be coming back. So let me just answer the one question about land that was a a a asked earlier. So in terms of land, uh, we actually. Uh, announced this back a while ago. You were the person asked about land, right? Yeah. We, we announced this back a while ago, and there's a whole uh, uh, talk back in July that we did a similar type of town hall. But basically, the land had uh, two or three fundamental issues. Um, one was the zoning was stricter than we even thought it was, and that has to do with A80. That is to say, zone A with 80 acres. Uh, they're very, very strict on what's allowed and what's not allowed there. So basically, if it's agriculture related, okay, but anything outside of agriculture, the answer is no, right? Second thing is we got, uh, there were at least four endangered species. And the, the, the issues of how to deal with endangered species are very, very complex. And there are four different agencies, two state agencies and two federal agencies, the U.S. Army Corps, the U.S. Fish and Life, something or the other, and the state versions of those. Uh, and then the cost per species per acre to pay off, like, I'm going to work, was very, very high. We looked at those two things. I was like, well, I can build a school. I can do this. I can do this. Why am I getting the land? Right, it was beautiful land, by the way, but then we, just, we said no. We walked away from it. Okay. There was there was a question uh, uh, the sister asked earlier. Why can't we do the uh, dining hall and the cafe first? And the reason that I think uh, Said Bai already answered had to do with um, there's a higher risk of a, a CUP change or modification being required. Uh, and therefore, that's the last in the package to go through. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. We'll, we'll go back and forth. Um, so, uh, basically, I think you touched on this a little bit, but I was wondering if the, any of these construction changes help mitigate the problems on Fridays with the congestion. No, I, I think it actually makes the congestion worse. Right. It won't, work the, it won't make the congestion on Friday worse, but it'll make the congestion worse because we're going to have more activities here going on all the time. Uh, Saturday school, Sunday school shouldn't make that. It doesn't really cause that much uh, congestion. It causes a lot of hubbub and activity, but uh, not a lot of congestion. Uh, so 
I, that, that is why I think it's really important for us, in addition to doing everything we're doing, is to, uh, it, it's very easy to say, look, just do this. But five years are going to come and go, and we better have a school here in five years, right? So we can't just say we're going to do, this is all we're going to do, and not start looking for buying some other stuff. Because we, are, we will out, be out, outside the capacity of all the things we want to do at this place, right? So we will look. If we find something tomorrow, we'll gen it up tomorrow. But until we find something that is sort of the right thing for what we're looking at, that we stick to this path. All right, just to follow up on that. So with this land thing, you guys went a little bit further out. So for the school, would you focus on this primarily area? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the land, actually, it's not that far. It's just seems far, right? Uh, no, if we do the school, I think we're limited to Pleasanton, Dublin, and maybe the southern so side of San Ramon. Uh, it's, and, and that's about it. I think that's the, that's the area, right? And unfortunately, that is the expensive area, and that's also the area that's hard uh, to find available spaces. The good news is there is commercial space. I mean, commercial properties are not doing well right now. Uh, and, you know, something may pop up. We are looking at things. Something may pop up that's like, okay, it's good enough, right? You, you want to be a little careful of good enough may not be really good enough, right? You have to be careful of what I just said, because you don't want to make that or oh, it's available for $5 million, let's go do it, but it, makes eight, it meets 80% of our needs and we really need 95% met, right? So we have to always make those judgments and, and not just jump on something we see at the first, first sight. Let, let him finish his, his question, follow-up question, I'll go back to you. Okay, uh, do we have a dependency on phase one and phase two and phase three? What if, if, the, what if, if the city approves phase two and phase three as well? Too? So can we take phase three as preference, preference over phase two? So because of the cost of phase two is much higher than phase three. So do we have that plans? Like uh, changing the order of phase one. Phase two, alhamdulillah, phase one, alhamdulillah, started. But phase two and phase three, if we get the approval for both. So, uh, phase three has a dependency uh, on phase one in the sense that uh, the commercial kitchen, uh, we have to run a sewer line outside the building along the area where, where our, uh, our picnic area is going to be and connect to the sewer line uh, on the street. So. Uh, if worse come to worse, if we don't have the approval for phase three by the time we are ready to start phase one, we will allocate some means in phase in implementing phase one so that we have to do minimum work when we implement phase three. So the impact is kept minimum. So that's... How about phase two? Uh, phase two, as per se, does not have a dependency on any of the other phases. Yeah. Inshallah, that's the plan. Yeah. You want to repeat the question? So uh, the question is a timeline for phase two. Uh, for phase one, we talked about a completion, a goal for completion of this fall, inshallah. Uh, for phase two, uh, the timeline seems to be fall of next year, completion day. So that's the goal. Part of you have to recognize is uh, we have to figure out what to do with Sunday school while we're doing this work, right? So when is the best time to do it? So there's timing, other timing issues involved also. Sunday school will be on new premise, inshallah. 2025. 25, 25, 
Okay, inshallah. Yeah, it's very When we do phase two, so this complete area will be not usable when we're doing that, or we can use this space as well as construct the level two. Uh, this area uh, on this side of the prayer hall will not be usable. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Because we'll be constructing on top of this. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam uh, Have you put into consideration that when people play on the basketball courts uh, for project uh, for package one, that the neighbors will be affected by the noise? Uh, so um, the it's a it's a con consideration that the association, the uh, hacienda owners association, take into account. And they have considered that, and they do not see that as an issue issue for the neighbors, for the noise. Uh, the city might come back and place some restrictions on the timing of the use of the basketball court. They may say that you cannot go beyond, uh, say, 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. at night so as not to disturb the neighbors. But uh, as of now, the we have the approval from the Hacienda Association, and uh, we do not have any restrictions placed from them. Yeah, I would just assume that they said no go after Isha. Like, after Isha, you don't play outside, something like that. And that may just be our own restrictions also on top of that. As a, as a uh, uh, have it two things for the, for the noise thing. I think probably for the basketball court, you have a gate and lock it because what happened will happen. I'm, I'm seeing that during Ramadan, at some time midnight, people praying, but some youth actually, <laughs> they're walking around. They may come and play at 3 a.m. Probably that. Maybe we have a gate just uh, yeah, so we yeah. can lock the, it. The plan is to have a gate. Thank you, Zazakallah Khairan. Yeah. And the second thing, actually, you're talking about the school. We may have the Sun Amon, South Dublin or Pleasanton. I'm thinking that why, because here is very expensive, why don't you consider Livermore? Because Livermore is a walking, it's cheaper. And I saw a lot of my friend actually now go to the Hayward uh, for the school uh, in here. And some of my person I know of my friend, uh, for the Islamic school, they moved from Pleasanton to Sacramento, Brentwood, another, and I think Mountain House, they have another school right now. So they're moving from actually, they're only for the school. And somebody moved to Dallas. I know one person, he was a liver, only for Islamic school, they're moving to Dallas for this one. So if you think about that people are moving outside of our community, only for this school, uh, so we, maybe yeah. Livermore is cheaper option, maybe. So I mean, I think that those are some good ideas. Uh, a couple of things I would say is uh, all the examples you gave, all, I, I think of those as exceptions. That doesn't mean there is not a trend, right? There is a trend because things are just too expensive here, so you, move, you start moving outside of here. So there is some of that trend also going on. Livermore is a potential, it just has to be close because the, the majority of the people who we're talking about uh, tend to be on this side. And Livermore, I used to live in Livermore. Livermore ends up, people come in, go out, come in, go out, come in, go out, except for the people at, the, uh, at a few places like the, the, the laboratory. Um, if you can find the right place, like on this side of Livermore, it's, it's, it's better. If you go further out, I think it's, you just won't see that many people taking this traffic. You know, because you know that, that, that small distance can be a horrific on 580, right? Both, both ways, depending on what time you're doing it. Because I've, I've done the commute myself. And I lived in Livermore, so I know. But Livermore is a, is Livermore is a potential just to be on the right, closer on this side. Anything else? Yeah. I just want to say thank you for being, for the presentation. Oh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I would say is, I think the question everybody's raising here are valid questions and has to do with why is this taking so long, right? Which is a very valid question. And my answer would be the same as I said before. If you've gone through a large construction project in your house, 
this is 3x the complexity. And you're not just dealing with the city, you're dealing with the housing, the, uh, the Hacienda Owners Association. And then two, we have to tell people in advance to get discussion going, to get feedback, to go through that process. And the clock starts here when we start talking about it, but we're not ready, right? Like we're now talking about the idea of maybe we'll buy something if there's something available, but that may take two years, three years to find, but we have to get the discussion going, right? The clock starts when we get the approval. That's when the clock really starts because until then nothing happens. You can do all the planning, all the detail work, but no execution starts. But you need to have the money before you get the approval because otherwise then you're stopped, right? So that's it's a combination of all those. But I think we should have done a better job of sort of explaining that up front. I think that we, we would have done better. Yeah, this one last question and then we're done in 15 minutes. Yeah, go ahead, please. I'm really pleased with all these ideas that we have. I'm especially excited for the cafe that we're going to you yeah, mentioned. Uh, but I was also wondering, I know, alhamdulillah, this masjid sometimes has uh, some knowledge seminars, like maybe two or three times a year. Like I know recently, Sheikh Yahya came and talked about Muhammad and the Quran, so, so on. And we also had that 40 hadith seminar. Sure, sorry, uh, yeah. But I was wondering if we could also consider having more uh, regular, consistent opportunities for seeking knowledge, like perhaps like a weekly tafsir class or uh, maybe a short talk between Maghrib and Isha Salah or some other time where, where people can be available or um, even, uh, I think Saramun Masjid a while ago also had like a introduction to the Urdu language for several weeks. Yeah, you know, yeah. Or it, another idea could be, besides just religious education, there's a lot of software engineers, alhamdulillah, in this community. We can have, like, for the youth, maybe an introduction to C++ on the weekends or something like that. Yeah, some of that we've done a little bit of, but not a lot of. But I, but I would say all of these things are all, they're all good. We should do all of them. Uh, they're ones that we should drive a little bit ourselves. Uh, but we're welcome to be driven by everybody, right? So it doesn't take much. You know somebody that wants to do this, uh, they go through a little process with Muneer, we look at it, and off you go, right? And we've had, we've had a few. What we desperately need, though, is sort of a fundamental curriculum that everybody can go through, right? This is what you need to know about your Aqidah. Aqidah not in a legalistic, not in, not in a pure legalistic way, just understanding what do we believe in, right? What, a the, what the theology is. Underst uh, fundamentally understand the Quran, the Quranic language, understanding of Arabic, understanding of, uh, you can, the list goes on, right? There are about six or seven areas we should have curriculum that is, that is base level, medium, and advanced, right, for different sets of people. I think we can start doing this. I think we have people in the community who can do it. We just have to get it organized and get it done. We, we did, alhamdulillah, Quran Tafsir, Surah Yasin Tafsir, uh, a series with Sheikh Talal. Um, yeah. we, have, we have done that. And also the question on the software side, we have introduced and we have brought uh, some of one of the big um, AI guru to the community. So inshallah, we, are, we are working. This is for the board of, uh, board of directors or board, MCC board question. Um, you can, even committee works on these things, so you can check with them. Okay. Yeah. Bismillah. Jazakallah uh, khair, uh, everybody. Thank you so much.